All right, Jules, up next, we're going to look at the attacking midfield nice. category. We're going to do so with the help of Rob Dawson. Uh, Rob, welcome aboard. Kevin De Bruyne, the number one. I have zero issue with this. Yeah. No, nobody has, surely. Neither do you, Rob, right? No, not at all. Um, you know, having watched him week in, week out with City last season, he was absolutely fantastic. City were the, the best team in Europe. I, you know, there is a, an argument that maybe his level is is on the slide a little bit. There were, there were points last season where Pep Guardiola wasn't particularly happy with him. But I think that just shows the overall level of the, of the player, you know, that, that even in a, in a season where there was slight criticisms of, of, um, of his output, he was still far and away the, the, the best attacking midfielder in Europe. Yeah, City, of course, have two players uh, on this list. Bernardo Silva is, uh, is, is third. Uh, Martin Udegaard uh, second, of course. Um, I think this interchangeability of, of, of players that, you know, Bernardo can come inside. Kevin De Bruyne, of course, started out uh, wide in the past and he plays centrally. Uh, it's almost like the two make each other better, right? Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's funny that you've got two players there, two City players, you know, really high up on that list, Kevin De Bruyne and, and Bernardo Silva, that probably offer very, very different things that, that in terms of what De Bruyne offers, it's in, it's pure output, isn't it? It's, you know, that, that creative hub that everything seems to go through him, the, the, the number of assists that, that he registers. Bernardo Silva is, is in the team probably for, for different reasons. I mean, even, even last season, he played out wide, he played inside, like you just said, he played as a six at a different point. He, he played at left back in a couple of games, which just shows you how versatile he is. And, you know, towards the end of last season, despite the array of attacking players that, that City had at their disposal, that it was still Bernardo Silva in that sort of front right position in, in the front in the front three, that really when, when the season came to the crunch and they were looking to get over the line in, in those three competitions, the Premier League, the FA Cup, the Champions League, that it was Bernardo Silva who, who was first choice, really. Um, not necessarily to do with, with, with his output, but in terms of the, how hard he worked and his versatility. Jules, I got no issue with four and five, Musiala and Bruno Fernandes. I suspect you're going to have an issue with the fact that Julian Brandt at six is ahead of Gavi at seven. It's just a little bit high for my liking. <laughs> Julian Brandt, who had a really good season and is, uh, is since the move from Bayer Leverkusen to Dortmund, he's had some highs and lows and sometimes we criticise the lack of consistency in his game. He seemed to have found the consistency in the season. It's just a shame that in the end he could not deliver the title uh, at, in the in the last game of the Bundesliga season, but there was certainly certainly a lot of improvement in his game, especially on that. Yeah, but he's not a better player than Gavi. He's no, just no, not. He's, he's just not. not, and he's not a better player than Lucas Paqueta, who's a. I know I make fun of the packet. Ha ha ha! The packet at nine. He's just not. No, no, no. Yeah, I think this is a case of. Yeah, but Brian this is a case of you. ESPN. F, ESPN plus as many Bundesliga fans must have, in the building. Must yeah, have, yeah, must have. Um, I. Going further down, another guy who I have a bit of an issue is Brian Diaz uh, uh, at eight. That seems a little high yeah, for me. Maybe it's just for that turn against Napoli in the Champions League. That was a pretty. That, that, that was a. That was a, great, though. A pretty better, uh, a pretty special turn. Um, Nicola Barella at, at ten. Now, Rob uh, Inter, of course, played a, a, a three-five-two most of last year, but. In this category, we include players, and I know it's difficult with different systems, but attacking midfield, and I just want to emphasize this, Rob, isn't just kind of the guy in the hole behind the striker. It's mm. also the guy in that midfield three who makes the most breaks forward. And in some ways, I wonder if there isn't a bit of a parallel there between the way some of uh, of City's midfield, in particular, obviously different skill set, but in the way De Bruyne broke through the middle, right? Yeah, I mean, you just touched on it there, that it's, it's quite difficult in modern football to break down lists of players into these categories anyway, because you've got different attacking midfielders who who different do different jobs. Um, you know, Barella for, for Inter Milan, it plays in a different way than, um, than Bernardo Silva does, for example, for, for City. Kevin De Bruyne plays in a different way than Bernardo Silva does in exactly the same team. Bernardo Silva, even when he's in, inside, like Kevin De Bruyne, plays in a different way than when Kevin De Bruyne is there. So, it, it, look, it, it is really difficult to to judge these categories. You know, I think it's interesting that, that with the players in there that maybe haven't got you know, the numbers um, that perhaps some of the other players have. You know, lots of, of attacking midfielders these days are judged simply on number of assists, right? But like you've said, Gab, that it doesn't necessarily mean that you're not a great attacking midfielder if you don't have a massive amount of, of, of assists. You know, Bruno Fernandes is, is in there. You know, some seasons, a couple of seasons ago, had 
a massive amount of goals and assists has, has tailed off slightly in terms of, of numbers, but that doesn't mean that he's not playing particularly well. So, um, you know, it, it's it's so hard to, to judge these categories, um, right. particularly, like I, you say, with, with different systems and different players. I, I hear you there. I think there's a, there's a drop-off after Bruno in five, and I think we all agree we expect Gavi to be higher next season sure. if he continues to pursue. Yeah. Should have been higher this season, for my money at least. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.